as it appears as though Elliot Friedman has been doing since he <laughs> checked off the set at Hockey Night in Canada and joins us now. Just back from uh, Canada's Wonderland. <laughs> I was there on Friday. Oh, really? Yes. Did you enjoy the Zumba flume? <laughs> we didn't actually take the Zumba flume. Is there still a Zumba flume? I'm there is, there is, is something that's like a that Zumba flume like yeah. Right. We've got our season's pass. Our son does the same six rides, and then we leave. <laughs> nice. Did you enjoy Italian Day at the band show? <laughs> no, I didn't do that. Did you, did you enjoy I that? I didn't do that. Um, let's get a few people up to date and let them know that you're, like, two months off after this Like, hit. seconds away. Is that why? my last thing. Right. Wow. Wow. Yes. We'll try and get you out of here quickly. Good for you. Uh, for those just joining us, the big news of the day is the Montreal Canadiens and Sebastian Ajo come yeah. together on an offer sheet. Uh, five years for the offer sheet, just over, or I guess we'll just say just under $8.5 million because it keeps them in the third compensatory pick yes. property. One first round draft pick, not two. Right. That's so a first, a second, and a third for yep. Ajo. Matt Duchesne goes to the Preds, the Leafs and Sens swing a deal. The guts of that, Cody Cece for Nikita Zaitsev and Connor Brown. Jason Spezza signs on with the Leafs. The Sens get Hainsey and Ennis from the Leafs and Tyler Myers along with Jordy Ben big signings for the Vancouver Canucks I'm gonna ask you before we get into all the juicy stuff okay you're what asking was, about the boring thing first no I'm gonna say what's the low-key move no one's talking about that after you've had some time to allow it to marinate you are most um, enthused about it. well I, it might have just happened actually Tim and yeah. that is that Robin Lanner uh, who as John Shan mentioned was offered two years and five million by the New York Islanders said no and signed with the Chicago Blackhawks for a year and five million and the thing that I'm most interested in about that is Corey Crawford who won the Stanley Cup there a couple of times with Chicago uh, has battled some injury issues the last few years hasn't been able to get full seasons in uh, he is in the last year of his contract as well. So I wonder if you kind of, covering sports, you kind of get some conspiracy theories that go in your head and you kind of think, okay, you know, Leonard in a one-year deal, he'll be eligible to sign an extension on January 1st. You wonder if this potentially is the passing of the torch in the net for the Chicago Blackhawks. That they look at Crawford, who's getting a little bit older now, and say, you know, if he can't stay healthy and Robin Leonard gets off to a good start, if it gives Chicago the heads up to say this guy's going to be our starting goaltender for years to come. So that might be the low key interesting move. Plus, um, I got retweeted by CM Punk, which was unusual oh, to see because wow. he's a big Blackhawks fan. So that's always interesting. Little CM Punk. You got, you got punked by CM Punk? Is that well, he doesn't follow me, and somebody just, one of my buddies actually sent me a tweet. He says, he sent me a text, you just got retweeted by CM Punk. Like, that's actually one of the few things in your life that's actually cool. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, I laughed when I saw it. Very good. Very good. Maybe we get a. Who's, the, who's your biggest retweeter? My biggest retweet? Yeah, do, you, do you know who that is? Might be you. <laughs> Sorry, I, Man, I apologize. For right. now, that question. Way yeah. to go, McAuliffe. Way apologize. to go. Um, now, the Islanders bring in Varlamov, yep. who at times had a rough go of things a year ago. Uh, and keeping the puck out of their net was such a strength for the Islanders last season. Where does that leave them, do you think? You know, it's been a really interesting 24 to 48 hours for the Islanders. Um, you know, yesterday there was a rumor going around that Varlamov, well, Bobrovsky, Panarin, and Varlamov are all represented by the same agent, a guy based out of New York City by the name of Paul Theofanis. And for a long time we thought that, and he got Panarin just before the trade deadline this year, he already had Bobrovsky, and we thought they were going to be a package deal. And then it became clear over the last 48 to 72 hours that Bobrovsky was going to Florida and maybe Panarin wasn't. And then the rumor came out that Varlamov, who he also has, was going to be a package deal to the Islanders with Panarin. And I do think that the Islanders offered the biggest overall dollar package for Panarin. And he took last to go to the Rangers. Mm -hmm. So I think the Varlamov thing had been in the works for some time. It's a four-year deal. I haven't turned, I haven't heard money yet. Uh, Lou Lamorello, not always very fast to share I've those heard. details. I've heard. I'm curious to see what that's going to be because... You know, they still have Grice there, but Varlamov had a really rough year last year. That'll be interesting to see. You know, it's been an interesting day for the Islanders. They almost lost Anders Lee. I heard he was agonizing about the possibility of not being back in New York. He wanted to be an Islander, and I think at the end when they lost Panarin, they budged on term, they got him up to seven years, and that got it done. That had been the sticking point for much of the year. 
The Islanders had a certain magic last year. You always wonder if the business side of the sport is going to interfere with that magic. Uh, let's continue on with the goalies. And the Florida Panthers brought in Sergei Bobrovsky, who yep. at times has been one of, if not the best goalie in the league. You can look at his Vesna trophies. Yep. And at other times, you've wondered if his heart is in it. You've wondered whether or not he can carry a team on his own. They've added some interesting pieces. Connolly, maybe from Edmonton, where a lot of people thought he might end up there. Yep. Strawman there. What do you think of what the Panthers did, and most specifically with Bobrovsky? Well, they had to find a goalie, right? Yeah. And uh, like I think Luongo is going to the Hall of Fame someday, but he was clearly at the end. Uh, and they, you know, the, if you look at the Panthers' roster, it's pretty good. They just didn't get saves. They can be better defensively, but they didn't get saves. You know, it's amazing to watch these Bobrovsky highlights now. As, as you mentioned, Tim, he had a really rough regular season. And if you remember the first period of the playoffs against Tampa, they Close. had him on the ropes. Yeah. Like, they were, the, the referee was counting nine. And then I remember, so Tampa scores to go up, I think, two to nothing. And that was one of the games we picked up from NBC Sports. And they cut to a shot of the backup, Corpus Salo, on the bench. And he looked like, please don't put me in. Like, like he, <laughs> and Bobrovsky got off the map. And, and just seeing some of the Tampa guys at the uh, awards, they were talking about how they had Bobrovsky beaten. Mm -hmm. And he just suddenly resurrected. And then the way he played, look, I, I think Florida just decided they were getting the best goalie. They were getting him. It's a big term. There's a no-move clause for five years. But they... You know, that's an organization that needs a good year, and they said, this is our best chance to fix what we've got. Right. And if they get, uh, if he gets them into the playoffs a couple times in the next couple years, they're going to deal with whatever comes at the end of the contract. <laughs> Seven-year deal for a 30-year-old goalie. I thought this was what got him in the place in this place. This well, time. don't forget Vancouver signed Luongo to that deal, yep. and and it turned out to be in a lot of ways a good deal, even though the penalty's hitting now. You know, you never know. Like sports is ageist, right? Like every time somebody over 30 now gets term, we just destroy it. You know, I don't know if it's going to be the same thing, but Henrik Lundqvist, when he signed in his early 30s, people were ripping that. That deal's going to turn out to be a good deal. And, you know, it's up to Bobrovsky to prove he can do the same thing. Will people be talking about the Panarin deal as if it's a good deal? He, there's nobody who's going to have a problem with that. First of all, he's in his mid-20s still. Right. 27. Yeah. He, he, or, yeah. But he's, I mean, he's a brilliant player. And he was get like, the Islanders, I think, were offering seven times 12 or 12 and a half. Colorado offered him 12 and a half for four years. They offered him about 80, they offered him about... 82 for seven years. Um, you know, Joe Sackick said today, we were in that guy right until the end, until he told us no. Like, people wanted this guy. He's going to make that a good deal for okay. someone. And you know what? It's going to be vomit-inducing for people, Sid. The NHL needs the Rangers to be good. Look at yesterday. They, they whiffed on Irving. They whiffed on Durant. And people are murdering the Knicks, and now they're all excited about the Rangers. They, you need the Rangers, even if you hate them, you need them to be relevant. I don't know if this relevant. completely puts a Band-Aid on yesterday for the Knicks. But, you it know, kind of puts a Band-Aid on it, yesterday you know, for the you Knicks. You know what it does? It, you know, it makes the Rangers big relevant. in the market. It, okay. it really does. Even with uh, Brooklyn, seems like, I mean, they've made a move. The Nets mm -hmm. have made a move. and But... The Rangers in that market are just as big as the Brooklyn Nets. Like even though the sports aren't comparable, those two franchises are very comparable. And you're right. When Sports Illustrated put the NHL on the cover and said the NHL is hot, the NBA is not, what happened? The Rangers just won the cup. Man, that was 25 years ago. 25 years. This month or last month. You old man. <laughs> I am. Old. You were you were 28 years old when that came out. <laughs> I was 23. Wearing the exact same thing you were. <laughs> I probably was wearing the exact same clothes. During the Fan 590 days. Uh, go Last ahead, one. Go ahead. Go. And, no, and no, we, we, like, do what we, let's do what we need Because this do. is it. He's on vacation. We, we can't do track this guy. Until, know, until like, we track down Kenny Smith. You look like you're ready. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You do, what you, do what you need to do. We've There's no way Carolina's not matching this. No. You know, I got to tell you, it was really fascinating, that whole thing. Um, you know, I, I got to really... You can, you can look at that. Was, this I, is him. Yeah, he's literally he's working. working as he's talking to us. Yeah. That's a pro. You know, look, he's, they're going to match it. There's not enough of a poison pill there 
to get them to not do it. Like, if you watched Don Waddell's press conference, he was like, oh, I thought I'd have to waste my whole summer doing a contract, and now I don't have to. They don't like the five-year term. That's the big win for Ajo. He, they only bought one year of unrestricted free agency, and Carolina's offer to him, I believe, was eight times seven and a half. They wanted the full eight-year term. So that's where he wins. But the poison pill is not enough, I don't think, and to get them the way, you know, it's, it was a really interesting, like, people, we started hearing that they were going to do it, and I was texting around and said, I think they're going to do it, and everybody was like, wow, and, you know, people really wanted to see it, and then the Canadians were the ones who announced it, and there was almost like this disappointment, like, I was getting texts, like, that's it, right. like, and, you know, if you're, you know, Timo Meyer signed for four times six today, too, if you're a team that's got an RFA that you were worried about offer sheets, what happened today with the Canes is not going to scare you. It's not. Like, it, like if you're Toronto and you've got Marner or you're Winnipeg and you've got Liney and Connor, you're saying if that's what people are going to do, we can handle that. We can handle that. Now, the one thing is it moved the line, and we'll see now if another team comes and says, okay, we got one. Montreal took the heat off us. Now I'm really going to step up and swing for the 500 level. Right. Because if that's what offer sheets are going to be, they're not going to terrify people. I'm sure there's some GMs with the RFAs. They're breathing. Whew, that's that's not as bad as I thought it could be. Right. We'll see if. But you know, I got to tell you guys, like the NBA gets a lot of the attention for free agency and deservedly so. There's some things that happened in the 24 hours I liked for the entertainment value of the NHL. Number one. Columbus making that, it, even if it was all PR and it was, when you when it comes out stunning that you're offering a guy $96 million, that's news. The offer sheet is news. Panera and going to New York, that's news. And, you know, Anders Lee today, when he went back to New York, did you see he tweeted out the scene from Wolf of Wall Street where Leonardo DiCaprio goes, I'm not bleeping leaving? The NHL needs that. And I, I thought there were some things that happened today that were pretty interesting. Um, I want to ask about Kekalainen. Go ahead. Because oh, after it was all said and done at the trade deadline, he was get he was being lauded, and I understand why. But in the end, he lost three, maybe the four guys, and they won one round. Was it worth it for Columbus to be all in? A thousand percent. Really? A thousand percent. Oh, you man. know, yeah, no, guys, like I don't know. Think about think about that fan base, okay? Like, look at the Raptors, okay? Right. If Kawhi Leonard leaves, is anybody going to have a problem with that? I'm I'm debating that now internally oh, more. No, I'm listen. I'm, 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 I got to be honest will, with you. Should they be? I'm debating I don't know, it now internally. I'm debating it more internally. No, come on, you. come on. He came like as far as like Kipper and I have this argument. Like I think even if he he leaves, they should retire his number when he's done. For what he did for a year. Wow, that's a whole well, he did so, in yeah. one year what nobody else could do in 24. You know what? He had the greatest season. He, he, he changed the franchise and he he brought the country together. Like, yeah, but it, they didn't do that in Columbus. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. But the thing is, they still gave their fans something. They had a sweep. You know, but you know, but think about. Okay, I need you to come they, to talk to me know in five years. Then they, they, you know, the Columbus has been in the, in the league for 20 years. They never won a round. Mm -hmm. They, like To me, it's rewarding your fan base. It's like, you know, and this was the year for Columbus to do it. They knew a year ago Panarin was, was not signing. They knew, Bobro I think Bobrovsky turned down $72 million. I think they offered him eight times nine, and he said no. Like, you can trade those guys for pennies on the dollar, or you can say, screw it, we're going for it, which is basically what the Raptors yeah. did. Now, the Raptors hit the, the like, they hit, Everything on the on the slot machine, like they won the billion dollars. Yeah, yeah the triple they, multiplier. They, they, they got the royal flush and Caribbean stud. Yeah. You know, these guys didn't get that, but they they gave their fans something. They they gave their fans something they'd never done before. I think there are times in your franchise history you have to say to your fan base, "We're going to try to give you something." I would do it a hundred times out of a hundred again. And I think they totally did the right thing. They acquired thing. a guy in Kawhi who's one of the best players on earth. Like, can you say Columbus they had one of those guys? Panarin's on their roster? one of the best players on earth. He is. That's why he's everybody. A 30, was, he's a point per game thirty goal guy. There's a lot of those in the league. For but, but the thing is, There's a lot to, of them. But the thing is, it's like in the NBA, like he, one guy can't change a game in the NHL like he can no, in correct. the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. But like, look look at how teams were falling over themselves to get to Panarin today. There's a reason those guys don't become available. 
That's I mean, true. I, you know, that, that's true. You know, I'm just saying, like, if they trade Panarin, we're all mocking them for what a bad trade they made. They kept them and they won a round. Like, come on, like, give give your fans something to cheer about. So Kekalainen's in, in good standing with the organization. I think He's so. Good. Look at look at. He look would have to get excited. the owner's sign off on. Absolutely. That, yeah. Look how excited. Look right. look at that. He could have just done that on his own. Right. You're right. Look at that building. How crazy it was. Those mm -hmm. fans were happy. You know, at some point in time, you got to reward your fans. Like, look how happy, look how happy Jays fans were for a while when. You know, when they got to the playoffs, like if the Raptors go one and eighty-one next year, do you think anybody's going to have a problem? They're going to there's going to be a hangover. Yeah, well, that's the thing, though. Masai set them up for the, they have cap space in two years, so even if it's screwed up, they're going to trust the GM. They're going to they're going to look at that guy and they're going to say whatever he does. We're on. I would say this. I would retire. In Columbus or in Toronto? No, in Toronto. In Toronto. No, I know so, that because yeah. he's got a, he's got a ton of cap space but in a great is, position. The thing is with with Columbus too. They're going to say, you know what, you you did something this year. They're going to be happy. They're going to, okay. they'll they'll find a way. Uh, you are going to basically uh, travel around the world here in seconds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, allegedly, when you come back to work, whenever that is, where will Kawhi be playing, and where will Mitch Marner? Be playing for and for how much? You know, I I I just think that I just ref, I just think Toronto and it's it's gone off the rails. It's gotten emotional and the, the Marner. Yeah, and okay. personal, but I just think they're going to sort it out. So it's getting a little ugly from what you're hearing. Well, it had like, of course, it, yeah. like it's been not and it's been emotional. It's been raw. It's I think both sides have been incredibly frustrated with each other. But I just believe at the end of the day, he wants to be a Leaf, and they're going to find a way to sort this out. It, there's going to be some bridges that need to get repaired, mm. and hopefully not as long as the average Toronto construction takes. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think Kawhi, like, I don't know. Like, nobody knows what that guy's going to do. He's the, he's the only guy that knows. I agree with you, but what do you think? <laughs> I don't want to guess. Like, who knows? Right. It's All right, how about this? I'll let you off the hook if you tell me, is there another offer sheet? I think I, now I think that one's done it. I think another will do it. Let's go, Fridge. Let's go. It's a good way Offer to step off all in the vacation. The place. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Seriously, I like I won't this look. I, I, I won't even ask you who. I, I, I gotta believe. think about it. All right, I, I gotta, gotta think you. about it. Patrick Lyon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just right. coughed. Elliot Freeman, the one and only. Have from a great Hockey trip. Canada. Have a great summer, boys. Yeah, Take See care. Have a great summer, everyone.